Brother said, go and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Survives like the biggest hill I think I've ever climbed. We're only four miles into the race and there's already this monstrous hill. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Abigail Page Designs YouTube video. This is the vlog we have all been waiting for, or at least I have been waiting for, and that is the marathon. All those months of training, all that eating, everything, all the education, the stretching, the pain, the sickness, and it's here. And yes, I did invest in a little microphone here. I'm hoping it'll help me sound a little bit better. I just am really trying to include little things that just make my videos quality just top notch. So yes, the microphone is the new addition. I cannot describe to you what an experience, what a ride this has been. Everything from, you know, having to train and get up early and go on long runs and getting really, really sick. Because if you have not been following me for a while, you would not know that I actually ended up with influenza B twice when I was training for my marathon. And I also ended up with mono at the same time. So it was rough. We had some rocky patches, but we overcame every single hurdle that came at us and we accomplished it in the end. Like I said, the training is just, it can be really, really grueling. It can be very tiring, especially if you work full time. So to all of you guys who work full time and are training for marathons out there, I feel your pain. It is seriously one of the best experiences I've ever had. Did it. 21 miles. Hey, I'm so excited because now we start to taper, which basically means we decline our long runs until the actual marathon, which means it's coming close, guys. It's so close, and I am I feel ready. I'm prepared, I think, as mentally and physically as I can be. <laughs> it is T minus 24 hours until the marathon, and I am just about to head out the door to go and pick up my bib. I know you told your friend you're not. We just got the bib. It's official. I'm so excited to try this sucker on. Thankfully, it's very small. I was worried it was going to be really big because then it kind of like rubs against you and I hate that. So I'm glad it's a really nice and tiny bib. <laughs> but I just bought some spectator tickets for my parents. So that's exciting too. It'll be nice to have somebody at the finish line, you know? <laughs> it's like I'm running to somebody. Now we head home. I got an hour drive. Okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you try to stay strong and fake a smile until. about 40 minutes until we take off. I'm so excited. I'm gonna just kind of walk around, stretch my legs, and make sure I'm ready. Commands, runners are set. Runners set. Two commands, runners set and go. Camera ready? ready. Runners set, go! And enjoy yourself! <laughs> beach this is terrible I'm not gonna lie but awesome at the same time <laughs> already down one gel I'm just gonna keep plugging now 13 baby halfway through it's so beautiful we just survived like the biggest hill I think I've ever climbed Take that back, it wasn't a hill, it was a cliff. <laughs> but we did it, and we have six more miles. I got first place for my age group and second place overall. Not bad for a first marathon. I finished in three hours and 42 minutes. So I'm happy and in a lot of pain, but we survived. <laughs> We 
did it. I got up. I had a wonderful pancake breakfast. And then I actually packed a banana with me and ate that on the way because we had to, I did the Grand Island Marathon out in Munising, Michigan. And so you have to take a shuttle to get onto the ferry to get out onto the island. And so I ate the banana while we were in transit to the island. And I think that really helped as well, because if you don't know, potassium is your friend as a runner. So never enough bananas. They seriously, if I don't have a banana before I run, then I don't know if it's a mental thing or if it is a real thing, but my runs are just not the same. We waited on the island for approximately like 40 minutes and then it came time to line up and it was one of those I was just so amped up and so ready and everybody around me, the crowd was just so excited. And just like that, we took off. And I would say the first three miles were super, super fun. (laughs) It was flat. Everything was great. My pace was around seven minutes, 30 seconds. So we were really hammering them out. I already looked at my watch. I'm like, wow, I'm already at mile three. And then mile four comes and there's this director directing us straight up a mountain (laughs) not really a mountain but it was a very 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 big hill i mean we're talking 900 feet of elevation just like that right up the hill so i was like oh my gosh what have i gotten myself into we're only four miles into the race and there's already this monstrous hill i went up the hill no problems and went back down. That was the fun part. I will say that was also very challenging though, because there was so many rocks and this was a trail run that you really, really, really had to focus and make sure you were, every single step was just right because so easy to twist an ankle. I went down the hill. I was actually very, very far ahead compared to everybody else at this point. There was only three other people in front of me and they were all guys. I felt pretty good. I just kept going. And then we kept chugging along and got to mile seven, I believe it was. And there was a beach not just any beach. It was a mile of beach. So the entire time you're running on a slant, two steps forward, one step back, it was gruesome. My calves were on fire and my foot really, really hurt. My left foot because it was taking most of the damage. I tried my best to run in the flattest part I could, but I didn't want to be running on dry sand either because that would have just been a calf killer. And I knew I still had a lot of race left. We very, very, very carefully made it through that little stretch there. I'd say my pace slowed down a bit. I was probably at like an eight minute mile by then. And that's when I actually stopped, used the bathroom in the woods because there was no porta potties anywhere. So just in case you're signing up for the Grand Island Marathon, please note there are not many porta potties out there. There's maybe like one. So something to think about if you don't like to use the woods to go to the bathroom. (laughs) And I'm just going to lay out all the ugly facts here because I don't want you guys to go into something and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this girl did that. She's crazy. I am here to admit, yes, I am crazy. (laughs) After that, it was just an uphill battle from there. I'm not going to lie. I filmed little snippets here and there when I was feeling good, but wow, like just It was hill after hill after hill. You know, there was a few aid stations. I filled my water bottles at most of them because I was very, very thirsty. My gels all went down pretty easily, so that was good. Then mile 15 hit, and I ended up with a terrible cramp. I don't normally get running cramps, but I have every reason to believe that it was all the hills. I actually kind of like took a minute, (laughs) just breathed there and like stretched things out and kept going and it got better. Thankfully it went away. And then mile 19 hit and this is where things got really, really ugly because as you know, mile 19 to 20 is normally when a runner hits the wall, they call it. It's basically where your body, you really start to feel it mentally you're exhausted, physically you're exhausted and in a lot of pain. Not kidding. My butt was on fire (laughs) at this point from all those hills. What do they put on mile 19 is a, I can't even really call it a hill. It was an actual cliff. One wrong step and you were tumbling down. I watched a few people struggle going up that one. Didn't even think about what I was doing. I ran right up it and actually filmed right afterwards. So if you hear me say, oh yeah, the monstrous hill, that is the one I'm talking about. At this point, I don't really know what kept me going because everything hurt, literally 
especially my abs. I did not expect this trail run to be such a off the beaten path trail run. I'm not going to lie. I was told by some fellow runners that this was going to be a nice and easy breezy trail and they were lying. (laughs) It was not, especially if you're kind of used to a very clear cut trail. This was brutal. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, the biggest thing was making sure your foot placement was good because I have every reason to believe that there was multiple people out there that twisted an ankle. Actually, the one girl I talked to after the marathon, she was limping around. I was like, oh my gosh, like, are you okay? And she had an ankle injury. So you just had to be really careful. I actually did end up wearing my Mizukis and I'm so thankful for that because A, they were lighter and B, they were a tighter fit. And I think that tighter fit really helped me to stabilize my foot a bit more. I think my Brooks would have been too clunky. So I'd say I went the right direction. (laughs) Got instinct the morning of the race. That's when I officially decided I was wearing the Mizukis and they got me through. That's for sure. And I'm going to be honest with you after that cliff, this is when it, those last six miles are just pure guts. At this point, you really just have to remain determined and not really think about what you're doing. You just have to keep going. You are very depleted and exhausted. And I mean, I passed several people at this point because I was like, I didn't make it this far to not get a good time. And I knew my family, my parents were waiting at the finish line. And I have every reason to believe that is what helped me push through those last six miles. So I actually amped up my pace. There was less hills, thank God, because if I saw another hill, I probably would have cried on the trail, literally. We just kept going. I have to tell you that last mile is the longest mile of your life. Cannot even describe to you. Like my feet were aching really, really, really bad. And I think that was like partially from the rocks and having to maneuver here and there and jump back and forth. I just kept going (laughs) until I saw this woman with a cowbell and I knew that I was so close. They're like, you got this. You got half half a mile left or something. And I was like, okay, so close. We're almost there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish it. And I did it. I crossed the finish line. (laughs) My family was there and I had already assumed that I would probably end up crying because I have not ever watched a marathon vlog or a first marathon vlog without somebody crying. It's just mentally and physically exhausting, like I said. And uh, crossing that finish line is (laughs) the most relieving, (laughs) proud moments you will ever have in your life. So I did get a little bit choked up and was laughing at the same time at how incredibly stupid I was to sign up for the Grand Island Marathon as my first one. Absolutely gorgeous. Seriously. I mean, just between seeing the cliffs and the pictured rocks and the beautiful clear Lake Superior, it was just stunning, but very, very painful. I (laughs) scared the bejesus out of my family, I think, because my mom and my dad have never witnessed what it's like to be at the finish line of a marathon and they were so worried (laughs) that I wasn't going to make it to the finish line. They had already watched somebody that finished the half almost die and have to be rushed off the island. So I think they were just as relieved as I was after I crossed that finish line. Now moving forward to today, I am not going to sugarcoat things. I (laughs) am incredibly sore. It is like leg day on steroids. I I'm going to try my best to just ease back into things, listen to my body. I actually did some yoga this morning and as sweaty and painful as it was, I feel like it really helped stretch my legs out. I have a few key sore spots that I would really like to work on. I can't wait to do another one. I know that's a shocker, but I'm already looking at signing up for one in January and I want it to be a Boston Marathon qualifier. So because my finish time for this marathon was three hours and 42 minutes, I stopped four times and it was a trail run. So if I'm running on a road, I have every reason to believe that I would make that three hour, 30 minute cutoff time for the Boston Marathon. I think that would just be a dream come true. I love running. It has seriously gotten me through so much and changed me as a person honestly. I cannot wait to explore and adventure further, see new places, and kind of use running to do that because I feel like you really truly get to know an area really, really well when you're running it. I am here to tell you that I survived, and if you are looking at signing up for a marathon, half marathon, 10k, 5k, and you need any advice or you would like to see kind of 
my fitness journey from start to finish. I would love to film that for you because running's not one of those things you can just like pick up and it's like, go. It takes baby, baby steps. And I think a lot of determination and motivation. So if you would like any tips on how to begin running or, you know, how I got to where I am today, I would love, love, love to create that video for you. I seriously cannot thank you enough for all the love and support you have shown me through this entire process. It seriously takes a team to get you to that finish line. And I couldn't have done it without you guys, my parents, my roommate, Abby in Florida. So thank you so much to all of you. I love you. And I can't wait to see what comes in the future. All right. All of that said, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this inspires you and shows you that, you know, although a marathon is a very scary thing and it is a very painful thing. It is seriously one of the biggest accomplishments I think I've ever had in my life, probably up there with getting my real estate license. So, and I'm still standing, literally, as Elton John would say. But I love you all, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray.